plan uh, that we're uh, implementing um, uh, starts when you introduce a public health measure, you always have to think of when it may not be further necessary. So with all of our public health measures, we've always thought of what would be the indications for the removal of these. And what we're trying to do for Ontario in partnership um, 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 with the, uh, the direction from government uh, is to provide advice to them on when public health measures uh, could be removed and what would be the basic indicators. That um, schedule we're working on uh, and we'll be providing to government next week. And that was Ontario's top doctor speaking this afternoon. Dr. Kieran Moore says he wants to see the impact of Thanksgiving on COVID-19 case numbers before making a recommendation about lifting capacity for other businesses such as restaurants and gyms. For more on whether Ontario is ready to exit step three of reopening, we're joined live now by Dr. Peter Uni, scientific director of the Ontario COVID-19 Science Advisory Table, Dr. Alon Vaisman, infectious diseases physician at UHN, and Rewa Dianandin, epidemiologist at the University of Ottawa. Doctors, thank you so much for your time and joining us this evening on CP24 tonight. Dr. Uni, let me start with you. Are we ready to exit step three of reopening? I think we're ready to plan the next step. What we need to be aware of right now is that we just made a really big step, which is dropping capacity limits in a setting such as sports arenas. Now we need to figure out, together with uh, the impact of, uh, of uh, Thanksgiving, also what the impact will be on uh, dropping these capacity limits. Nobody knows, nobody has been there with this vaccine coverage and with uh, Delta being dominant. So we need to see, needs three weeks from the moment we did that, meaning end of October. End of October. So you're thinking by then we will know whether or not we can see those uh, capacity limits being lifted for restaurants and gyms. Dr. Vaisman, the province had its lowest case count yesterday with 306 new infections. The rolling seven-day average, uh, that's down. Daily infections uh, continues to decline. 500 now, down from 565 last week. Since things are going or seemingly going in the right direction, should we just stay the course? Is COVID zero a possibility for Ontario? Uh, so I think in general, as things are getting better, still the idea of COVID zero is, is just not a practical approach. It's very unlikely that this disease is going to be eliminated at any point in the future. I think we need to get used to the idea that even with a highly vaccinated population, we're going to have to live with COVID to some degree, uh, similar to how, how flu or other respiratory viruses are circulating. Of course, the goal is that we don't want COVID to impact our lives the same way it has in the last 18 months in terms of resulting in morbidity and mortality. But with the high vaccination rates, that's less and less likely to occur. So it does make sense to roll out uh, or to roll back on things very slowly. But I think the aim of COVID zero is not a very practical one. Okay. And a lot of small business owners, we know they're expressing frustration that they were left out of the lifting of capacity limits last Friday. Dr. Dianandin, when, when you see fans like last night at Scotiabank Arena, full capacity sitting side by side, different households with masks off, eating and drinking, is that any different or maybe even more risky than being at a restaurant? Well, it is possibly more risky. The sheer number of people is concerning. There's some unknowns, of course. The ventilation requirements for the facility are largely unknown. Um, at the same time, though, there has to be a reward for vaccination. We have the vaccine passports in place. People are gathering safely indoors. Um, they sh uh, we're, we're going to see the power of vaccination expressed in its awesome uh, way very, very soon. Uh, I like what Dr. Uni said. Um, it is a bit early. I think we're trending in exactly the right direction. We have to wait for some data to come in. That data primarily is what happens uh, after we lifted the most recent uh, restrictions and after what happens for Thanksgiving. So we have a history in this province of doing things a bit too quickly, we getting too <laughs> excited. And, and we look around the country and we see the lessons from other provinces is that we cannot be arrogant with this disease. We must be humble and wait to see what its effects are, what it requires of us before we act. So I think he's absolutely correct. Wait until the end of this month before we make that determination. But that, of course, isn't happening, correct? Dr. Uni, uh, the province expected to make an announcement next week, which is at least a week out from the end of the month. Do you th expect the Ford government to be announcing that they'll be lifting the rest of these capacity restrictions in gyms and restaurants out of pressure from a lot of the business owners. Will that come sooner than you'd like to see? 
Look, we don't know. What I expect next week is a roadmap that we see, you know, when the next steps could happen. And I hope it's not at all clear that this is indeed happening next week. I think we all learned our lessons and uh, and looking at the situation we are in compared with Alberta, um, other places, we just did the right thing. And the point really is you do something and then you need to be patient and wait for three weeks to see what's happening. And we also shouldn't forget, you know, in the situation we're in, the weather gets worse and vaccine effectiveness will wane a little bit if it comes to preventing infections over time. So we're just not, you know, in a safe ground, on a safe ground yet, and we just need to acknowledge that. So doing that step wisely again, I wouldn't like to be in our chief medical officers of health shoes, but so far he has done a great job, and I hope he can give a little bit pushback against some of the political pressure. All right. And Dr. Vaisman, uh, what specific indicators do you think health officials will be looking at going forward when we do exit step three? So, of course, the daily case counts are still helpful. But now I think more of the focus is going to be on the amount of morbidity, mortality associated with the disease. So what I mean is how many hospitalizations associated with COVID are there now and how many people are in the ICU and how many people are dying as a result of COVID. Going back to the beginning of the pandemic, many of the restrictions have been justified by the fact that we don't want to overwhelm our hospital system. And if you look at the situation right now, certainly we've passed a very small wave and hospitalizations are declining and ICU rates are stable approximately. So I think those are the main things that we want to focus on going into the future. Going back to what we said earlier is that we're going to have to live with this, this disease to some extent. But the main thing we want to avoid is, is having a significant amount of morbidity and mortality associated with it. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Dianandin, uh, all of this seems to be happening at the same time. We're seeing the reopening of the Canada-U.S. land border soon. How do you see this affecting Ontario's reopening plan? It confuses the data. And this has been, again, a, a narrative that's played out many times in the past year and a half where we've done many things simultaneously. And it's difficult to disentangle what effects cause what uh, what causes cause what effects. So um, epidemiologically, it's going to be difficult to see whether or not a, a possible increase in cases was due to increased travel or, in, or a reduction in uh, restrictions. Um, but this is where we are. Uh, we intermingle public health policy with political policy, and that is to our larger scientific detriment. Okay, so you're not in favor of that, it sounds like, correct? No, no, I think it's probably warranted. It's just that it confuses the data stream. Mm -hmm. So it's difficult for us to answer questions uh, bluntly and overtly and with clarity, given the fact that we have multiple uh, effects simultaneously. Dr. Uni, do you agree with Dr. Dianandin about uh, the land borders reopening, confusing the data and how we read that? I think it's, it all depends on how this really happens, you know. Uh, if we control the border continuously with uh, just admitting people who are fully vaccinated and have a negative test, things look a bit different. That's powerful risk modifiers. If we start to get ahead of ourselves and admit people in under different circumstances, things will get more challenging. I see. And Dr. Vaisman, uh, there is talk that the province could be moving to a voluntary proof of vaccination system for businesses. Do you think that this will just discourage the remainder of those who are unvaccinated to roll up their sleeves? Yeah, certainly when you look at the, the vaccine mandates and the passports, the two main goals is one, to make sure that people are safe in those areas, and two, is to encourage people to get vaccinated. So one thing to think about is which businesses are you pulling that back on? Are they going to be the ones where there's going to be high risks of transmission? And secondly, you're right that there could be some extent where some businesses, people were kind of motivated to get vaccinated because they want to participate in it. For example, perhaps some restaurants or sporting events. And now people may be a little bit more hesitant. So I think it's important to try to keep that going for as long as you can in order to encourage as many people to be vaccinated and keep it going specifically in areas that are highest risk for transmission. So those that are close quarters, poorly ventilated, where transmission is most likely to happen. Okay. And doctors, I want to get to the subject of school because we are seeing uh, a lot of cases arise in schools, entire schools being shut down. Dr. Dianandin, do you think that uh, the reopening of the province should coincide with perhaps the approval of kids 5 to 11 getting, uh, being able to get vaccinated? Ideally, the two would be somewhat linked, but they don't need to be. Frankly, they're separate issues. And we can do so many things right now to keep uh, schools safer. We can mandate vaccination for all the adults that the kids come into contact with. Mm -hmm. We can have better ventilation improvements in schools. We can mandate better quality masks to account for aerosol transmission. We can use rapid tests to a greater extent than we're doing now. So we can disentangle the two uh, issues, the reopening and school safety. 
And Dr. Peter uh, Uni, any last thoughts on schools? Well, I think from my perspective, you know, the point there is right now, before we can start to vaccinate kids 5 to 11, we just need to also focus on schools, not only on ICUs and hospital beds. And uh, this means uh, it's good to keep case numbers relatively low so that, that we don't have too many uh, outbreaks in schools. This will be helpful together with the measures just mentioned. Okay, doctors uh, Peter Uni, Dr. Alon Baseman, and Dr. Rewa Dianandin, thank you so much for your time this evening to chat about this. Take care. Thanks, thank all. Thank you very much. Thanks.